On today's Crafting with Kimberly, we're going to make this table sitter. I've chosen a rabbit bunny shape because it's spring, so you can fill it with candy or eggs or put it on your table and put your keys, anything you want to add into that. So join me, Kimberly Canale, Crafting with Kimberly. We're going to need the following supplies. A wooden cutout shape that is sold at the Dollar Tree. I am using a rabbit because we're celebrating spring. That was what I chose to use. But any of the wooden cutouts that they have, they come out with some great seasonal ones or just even shapes for signs. This can be applied, this process can be applied to, to any shape or size. So just some kind of wooden cutout. I am using a little wooden crate that the Dollar Tree also had. This way, when we attach it, we can fill the crate with either eggs or candy or moss and carrots, a little flour, anything that you'd like for that. But you don't have to have the crate. You could also have it where it just hangs on the wall. That would be fine too. So crate or no crate, your choice. What we're using to cover the shape is this great faux tin tile. It's plastic, but it looks just like metal. It does say self-adhesive, but you're going to need um, a glue gun. You could also use any kind of school glue that would work as well. For the whiskers, I have gotten this twine. It is a wired twine that will hold its shape. You can make curly cues, looks really cute, very thin. That's what I'm going to be using, but if you don't want to get that, you can use regular twine, you can use string, you can use chenille sticks, uh, the pipe cleaners, whatever you want to use for that, for whisker string. I am going to paint this. You can paint it or not paint it. I'm going to paint it. I went to Joanne Fabrics and I got this Delta Ceram coat, um, which is nice because this is basically, it will cover any surface. It'll do glass, wood, paper, uh, plastic. So that's why I wanted a good coverage on using that kind of paint. If you want to do a bow, I am using just some strips of fabric and lace that I have. So go to your stash, see what you have. You can add some flowers to the bow if you want, and you can also use um, some buttons. I'm gonna attach a button for the bow. I'm also going to use a button for the nose. You obviously need, because you have the, you we're going to paint it, you need a paintbrush. So either a regular paintbrush or a foam brush will work and have some water. And I suggest um, having a Sharpie or um, some kind of really good thick pen because we're going to trace our outline on the back of our tile. So Sharpies work really well to be able to see what you're doing and being able to cut it out. So then have a pair of scissors as well. So those are supplies. Let's turn the camera around and start our project. So let's begin. Take your wooden shape and remove your tag. This string is nice. They have a little piece of twine that can be used for your ribbon. So you can just set that aside if you don't even want to buy any other twine. So now you have just your wooden shape. Take your package of your faux tin tile, open that up, and again, it's going to be called a self-adhesive wall tile. It says just peel and stick. We're going to trace on this side of the tile, and you can see, you can peel that off, and that's where your adhesive is. So when you keep it attached, it is a sticky back tile. We're going to be cutting out. So once you cut out on the shape, the stickiness stays to this plastic side and you'll just be left with the faux tin. So we're going to have to hot glue it. So when you're, if you're using these for a big piece and you want to put them on your wall, it stays adhesive. Otherwise, if you do any kind of cutting, that comes away and you're just left with a plastic shell. 
So as you turn that over, I'm going to leave this plastic cover on the back of it so I can trace and cut my pattern. Put it right in the middle. Take my Sharpie, press it down, and I'm just going to trace. So you trace your complete outline around your bunny or whatever shape it is you are using. This really gives like an antique look. So again, you can use this for every holiday. Whatever, whatever shapes they have for the season, they always have these self-adhesive tiles in season. So now I've traced that out. I can set that aside. Now we're going to, let's take our scissors and just cut this right out. If you want a little bit of an overhang on your shape, cut outside the line. If you don't want the overhang, cut right on the line. I found it doesn't really matter. I'm only having this face one way. If you are using for future projects, if you're going to be using one of the signs that they sell, I would suggest thinking about how you want it placed. If you want to be able to have it reversible, then put this faux tile on the back of the picture, and then that way you can flip it around if you want. You can have the, the faux tin showing on one side, and whatever the sign says on the other. If not, then it doesn't really matter. This wooden bunny didn't have anything on it, so it didn't matter. And again, I'm not going to paint the back of it. I don't care because I'm gonna have it in a corner, so it won't, um, it won't show that much. So you're just going to cut all around the shape. I also, if you've watched my videos before, you know I don't throw anything out. <laughs> so I am going to keep the scraps of what I'm cutting off because these can make some really cool, if you like making jewelry, the backs of these can make some really cool jewelry patterns. You can cut and shape it out. Or if you do book journaling or collaging, uh, those will make some nice patterns. So I'm going to speed this up so you know how to cut. I'm going to speed up the video. And join me back here. So now we have our bunny shape cut out. You'll see that this will then come right off. This is what the adhesive is actually stuck on. So because we've cut this, now we're just left with a plastic without the adhesive. But now you have an adhesive bunny that you can use for decorations. So it's kind of a two for project. So now because that does not have adhesive, we have to attach it to our bunny. So we're gonna lay it up on there, make sure everything looks good. Like you said, you'll have a little bit of an, of an overlay and that's okay. I like to do this um, turned over and I like to kind of draw my outline with the hot glue gun and I like to go in in little spurts because you know how fast hot glue guns and the hot glue attaches and it starts to dry so I'm gonna go just the top part right now really get that in there 
so I can make sure my my gun my glue gun is really hot the glue's coming out so I'm gonna just worry about attaching the top and if you do it upside down you can really make sure that it's going on correctly And you can flip it over if you want. Make sure there is no very, it gets very hot, even though this is plastic, because we put so much glue on it, it does get hot. So be careful with that. But that way you can flip it around, make sure that it is all stuck down. Take off any strings that you have. Attach that in. comes out the other end. <laughs> Whenever you're using glue guns, you always get a ton of it. All right, so I've gone halfway. Now I can lift this up and I can start to glue down this way. The toughest part is just making sure you've lined up. So if you do part of it, to me, the hardest part are the ears and the whiskers. You really want to make sure that gets attached well. So then once you get that, then you can flip it over on this side. And carefully push it down. And again, kind of be careful. If it's too hot for you, you can take a paper towel so you can smooth that on down if that gets too hot. But now you can see I have a little bit of overlap around, but I'm not really worried about that because I'm not really going to be seeing that side of it. Just the important part is that you do not have any wooden parts showing through on the front side. And if that's the case, this is this is just plastic. You can gently peel it up and re-glue. But you can see now that looks just like a piece of tin, which is really, I think, really cool. Your choice if you want to paint it or leave it tin. You can do multiple things. You can, if we're going to attach, this video, we're going to attach the basket to the bunny so he will stand on a table. If you also, if you wanted it to be two dimensional, where it's okay to be looking at it from other side, either side, you could also put another one on the back of that and then just have it be double sided. You could also take another tin then, I mean another crate and put that on the, on the other side of that. So because that's what it would look like from the back. So if you're going to put this in the center of your table, then I would suggest buy two of the faux tiles, put that on the other side, and then put another crate on this side, and then you'll have both sides showing, which will be really fun. As I mentioned, if you wanted to have it show double, I took this rabbit and I did both sides. The one problem that you can see is that you're never going to cut it exactly the same. And as you glue it on there, you're going to be able to see the back of it. So you could either take the time to fill those gaps with glue and then push them together so it's sandwiched in like I did on this edge. Or you could either take... Um, piece of ribbon or even a piece of twine and lay that in between to kind of finish that edge and glue that around, that's going to take you a lot of extra time and work, but that's what it would look like if it was back to back. And like I said, you can really see, you can either trim it completely so it doesn't show and you just show the wood, take an X-Acto knife and cut around, trim that up, or as I said, go through and take your time to glue your pieces together. So I, I did another bunny and this one happened to be painted on the back. So that's what that looks like, just separate. So again, if you really did not like the extra edge because I did not 
cut on the inside of the line. I really wanted to make sure that I had it completely covered. If you don't like that, take an X-Acto knife and you can cut around and then have that be flush. So that's your choice. You can see it's not exactly flush when you're standing. When it's standing up, you can't tell the difference and you can't see that. But if you were to look from the backside and you did not want to see that white showing, then go ahead and, and trim that with an X-Acto knife. Now that we have our, our tile glued, if you decide that you want to paint it, now is the time to paint it before we do any other decorating on the front of it. So my color that I chose is this oyster white, not quite bright white, but still white enough. I'm gonna put a little bit of paint out there. And again, you can use either a bristle brush or a foam brush, whatever works best for you. And now I'm just gonna go over all of this. Painting as I go here. Just gonna cover the whole thing. Make sure you have your work surface covered. And I'm just, I don't want it completely covered. I do want some of the tin to show through. So that's why the foam brushes are nice because you can really rub hard with the foam. And then I'm gonna take the other side of it. This just gives like an antique farmhouse. It can be completely covered. You can keep it plain, your personal choice. I'm gonna show you both, so then that way you'll know what you wanna do. Any color too, if you have other colors that you wanna match your decor. Many of the farmhouse style crafts do this um, kind of off-white color. Gives an antique. You can even take a light brown, like an ink pad or a brown paint and rub over the top for the edges to give it more of an antique look. So that's what that looks like. I'm going to kind of wipe that off a little bit. I'm going to take the back of my foam brush now and I'm just I'm going to go over the top a little bit. So I'm going to take off some of this paint because I, I just want a hint. I just want to give a little hint of color with some of the tin showing through too. And again, if you took a brown ink pad, you could rub that over the top of it too, and that would make all those parts stand out. But I like that. So you've got the idea of having it just stay the tin look, or this is what it looks like painted. I'm also going to paint my bucket, my little crate, I'm gonna use this pretty blue paint. This one was called Blue Heaven. I'm just gonna add it right on top of right on top of that. I'm not even going to change my brush. I'm just gonna start painting. And again, you can leave this plain. You can decoupage on it if you want to take napkins, make that real fancy, whatever you want. The foam brushes are nice because you can really get into those nooks and crannies. But this, the Ceram, the Ceram coat paint is really nice because you can see that really covers everything, covers it quickly. I'm going in between because I don't want those big white lines to show. So you can really push it in, ruins your brushes, but it's a nice thing about these foam brushes, they're pretty cheap. You can see how nicely, how nicely that coats. 
I thought blue was a pretty spring color and would match everything. Especially I will probably put a little bit of moss in here and then some of those paper carrots that they have. I think that would be cute. And I thought the blue and the orange would look really nice together. And the blue and the pink always look good. This was a good, this was a good springy color. So you can see how easy and how fast that goes. And you can either do one coat or two if you want it to look like that shabby chic look still. Um, you can put a little bit of white over this as well. I'm just doing this really quickly. Um, I will paint the inside of that too. So let me speed the camera up again now that you know how to do that. Let me speed the camera up and I'm going to paint my inside right now. So now let's decorate a little bit. As I said, I have a little pink button that I'm going to use as a nose. And I have this really fun wired twine that I'm going to use. These are great to do a whole bunch of different projects. It's fun if you put uh, book pages behind it to make shapes. That's going to be an upcoming class that I'm going to be doing. But it's meant to stay stiff. So I want my whiskers, I'm going to just measure it from, from edge to edge because I'm going to put a little bit of curly Q in there. So basically to cut these, because I don't have my ruler handy, I'm going to measure it from edge to edge and I'm probably going to add on another inch to that. So my guess, I probably cut maybe eight inches, probably about eight inches. So I'm gonna cut three pieces of this because I would like three whiskers and I do want them to be the same size. So I'm just gonna take what I've measured. Again, you don't have to measure, you just do what looks good for you. I want them to be relatively the same size. So now I'm gonna take my Sharpie that I was using and I'm just going to wrap that very gently around my Sharpie. So I can wrap it around, get a little curly cue. Now I can pull that out and look how easy it is to make curved whiskers. So I'm going to do that again. Just come up to the edge of my Sharpie. Wrap it around. Pull it off. Pull. That's two. and pull it off. So now I have three whiskers. And because it's wired, once I glue them on, I can move them to where I want them. So then you're going to look at your bunny and you're going to say, all right, where, where do I want my nose? Imagine where eyes would be and then kind of go in the middle of that. This has a nice kind of little pattern right there. So I think I'm going to go right into that pattern. So I'm going to take my hot glue gun, put a good dollop of glue. I'm going to lay my whiskers down and I'm going to place my button. So then this way, I can glue everything at once. Careful of the glue um, oozing up through your holes. Be mindful of where your holes are, whether you want them facing up and down or sideways. And just glue that on there. Make sure that that is good and stuck. I'm just gonna peel off the little glue that oozed through the holes. And now I can take my wire twine and just kind of move it where I want it to be. And look at how cute that is. So now let's make a bow for our bunny. 
I have just taken some fabric scraps that I have. I've cut them into the shapes that I've wanted. With this piece of fabric, I took the edges and I just pulled pieces of the fabric out so then it would give me a fringe. I did that on both sides. So that gives a nice look. Now I'm just going to lay my pieces in a random pattern. I have lace, I have ribbon. I want this to be like a rag bow, the farmhouse style. I'm just laying all different kinds. And I'm also going to take the piece of twine that was on the wooden shape and I'm going to just take that and wrap that around. I'll lay that back down. So I just went in the center of that and I just want these to hang freely and loosely. I'm gonna tie this. Tie that right in the center like that. I don't know if I have enough to make a bow. Let's see. Because again, I'm reusing the piece of twine. If you cut your own, then you can know exactly how long it is. If not, no, I don't really like the way that looks bowed. So I'm just going to tie that. I'm going to tie a knot because I'm going to put a button in the center of this. But I like the look of that twine, so I'm going to let that twine stay there and just be part of the decoration. I have a really fun set of buttons right here. So I'm going to layer my buttons. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue, put that in there. I'm going to take my other button, decide which way I want it to go. I'm going to put my button right in the middle. So it's really fun when you can layer buttons. I have a big button box and my mom helps uh, get me supplies of buttons. So I never know what I've got in my button box. And this was just absolutely perfect because this had a little pink swirl to it. So that's going to look really cute on that. And I'm going to just put a dab of glue right in the middle of that bow. Place my button on top. Hold that down. And now I've got that, that glued to it. I attached the nose and the whiskers to the bunny that was just plain, not painted. So you saw what that looked like. I decided I really do like it painted. So I went through and I painted this. I would highly suggest know what you want to do. Decide first whether you want to paint it or keep it plain. Um, because what I did is I glued it on there. And if even if after you decide you do want to paint it, I just took the whiskers. I pushed it all up like that. I then took my paintbrush and then painted, painted around it. I painted all around, making sure that I didn't touch it. Then what I did is I took a piece of paper towel and I just kind of rubbed some of this off like this. So you could see I wanted some of the tin to show through. So this is how this is how I distressed that. So it looks so it looks like that. I'm gonna put a little bit more right there. I took a bit too much off. And then that's where you can really play and say, well what do I want? You can do that with a dry brush, you can do it with the pa with the paper towel, whatever your choice is. So now we have the bunny painted with our nose and whiskers. And I can, since I've moved those, I can recurl those with the Sharpie once my paint dries. 
because I'm not going to take the time to let that dry. I want to do this video for you. So I'm not going to take the time to let that dry. At home when you're doing this, give your bunny a paint job and then um, let it dry. So now we're going to attach the, the crate to the bunny. So I'm going to decide what side of my crate that I want to attach. Simple as can be, I'm just going to take my hot glue gun, get a lot of glue on my one side of the basket. I'm going to set it down on my protected work surface. I am going to get this right in the middle. Bring it up and push to hold it. What's a nice thing about, about glue guns is that the glue dries very quickly. If you really want this to last, E6000 would be a great glue to use. I'm not sure how long the glue gun, the glue stick will hold the wood into the plastic. There's also Gorilla Glue Gun sticks that you can get, which is a lot stronger as well. So if for some reason the, the glue is not holding for you, then I would again suggest either using the E6000 or a Gorilla Glue. But now you have a basket that is attached and you can do, I had some paint on my fingers, so that's where those, I'll touch that up. Um, but now this will sit on your table and you can fill that with things. My last step is just to attach my bow and decide where I want it. I think I wanna put it way up, way up at the top of the ear. Yeah, those are what all the different places it looks. I'm gonna put it up there at the top. So for that, I'm gonna turn this back down. Get a big glob of glue. Decide which way I want that to hang to hang down. I think it's naturally wanting to go that way, so I'm gonna put it that way. Add that in. Push down. My strings, so you always have glue strings whenever you're using glue guns. Some glue sticks are more stringy than others. And there was a trick online that said if you put your, your hot glue sticks in the um, freezer, they won't do this. That's a myth. Nothing is going to stop you from having glue strings. It's just the nature of the type of glue. So then you just can arrange that the way you want to have that hang. So this is what the finished bunny looks like. I hope you had fun. I hope you saw what an easy project this is to do and how whatever shape you use will give you a really cute look, whether you add a crate or just have it hanging without a crate. You can see sky's the limit again as to what you can do and, and how you can decorate. I hope you had fun. This is Kimberly Canelli, Crafting with Kimberly. See you next time.